Hello, everybody. So today I want to go over evaluation of five eat and drink uh, stocks. And I also have a bonus stock in the form of Cheesecake Factory, which we'll get to the end. Um, five stocks in the hyper growth space. So um, most of these stocks, actually, aside from Celsius, most of these stocks uh, come on regularly in the comment section. And I've been suggested to me by my viewers, um, especially uh, Dutch Brothers. So Dutch Brothers, um, I've made a full video analysis about it. It's a drive through only coffee space. I mean, they don't they don't really sell coffee. It's a it's a drive through only coffee shop. But coffee is like a a, a a minor part of the business. They sell a lot of these complicated and interesting uh, drinks, and they seem to be very popular among teenagers, among Gen Z, and so forth, the next generation of consumers, right? Um, and if you look at, at Dutch Brothers, revenue growth is 35%. Gross margin is 27%. So again, this is the problem with investing in restaurant stocks. Is the gross margin is not going to be excellent. It's not going to be as good as good as the payment stocks or as good as the SaaS stocks. So the gross margin you know, is going to be smaller and the growth this is also what I wanted to say as we go through these stocks. The growth uh, is is never going to be as high as a purely digital business, as a business that is not constrained by brick and mortar. These businesses are constrained by the brick and mortar operations. And that's why we, we have a hard time finding growth um, above, say, the 40, 50 percent range, aside from Celsius, which we'll get to in, 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 in a second. Um, EBITDA margin for Dutch Brothers is 13 percent, which actually, uh, makes it score really well on my rule of 40. It's a 48. So that's actually the second best stock out of all of these five stocks uh, here, Dutch Brothers at a, at a 48. They're already, they're already EBITDA margin profitable. So I actually like this stock much more uh, than, say, a Cava. Uh, as far as Dutch Brothers goes, it is it is a uh, it is in uh, well it's not even it's not even the top here. It's a little cheaper than the average stock I usually follow on the channel, but it's not that that cheap if that makes some sense. Now moving to a stock um, that is is expensive. I actually tried it. I tried it the other day. I tried Cava the other day. I thought it was uh, really in the trends. You know, it looks. I mean, it follows the playbook of Chipotle and it looks just like a Chipotle. And I mean, in in a way, it kind of tastes like a Chipotle. So Cava. Is is, is uh, to me, I, I can see how it could uh, become popular uh, in the US. But uh, when I look at Cava, you know, I look at this, this valuation and I have to think about the valuation of Tesla. This is very similar, a 1.01 at my on my EV over gross profit or revenue growth valuation. That's very similar to Tesla. And so I ask myself, why wouldn't I just buy Tesla at 200 a share uh, when, when, I, when I see this, if that makes some sense. Uh, as far as Cava goes, Cava I find expensive right now. Revenue growth predicted is thirty is twenty five percent, which is fine. Gross margin thirty six percent. You know, it's it's good for a restaurant business. It's good for a restaurant business, but you know, you you don't have to invest in the restaurant business. That's kind of a big question here. But it's good for that business. Uh, EBITDA margin is eight percent. So they 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 haven't even broke a a rule of forty here. They are a rule of thirty three. And by the way, the rule of forty, if you know, um, it, it's a it's a way to assess SaaS stocks. And the whole idea is that you want the growth of revenue plus uh, the EBITDA margin, you want that to be above 40 for you to consider the stock compelling. So in the case of Cava, um, the only thing I have to say is that A, it's an expensive stock at a, at a 1.01. So that that's in line with a Tesla. So I'd rather own a Tesla. Uh, and uh, then obviously, if you look at the rule of 40, which the rule of 40, by the way, does not take into account valuation. There's no valuation in rule of 40. It's just looking at the growth and the money. It's a 33. So it doesn't even break that. Moving on to the clear winner and the stock that I own and that I've covered on the channel. And I often cover this stock also uh, in my reviews of all of the stocks of the channel, you know, the most undervalued stock reviews, uh, the 10 best stocks reviews. Celsius is sometimes included in there. Celsius Holdings. So Celsius is an energy drink that you see everywhere in the United States. It's uh, taking the US by storm. And when I look at Celsius predicted growth of 79% next 12 months, predicted growth, 48% gross margin, you know, EBITDA margin, 16%. So if you add all this, you get a rule of 95. That's 
unheard of. The only stock that I've covered on the channel was was more than that is Transmedics. Transmedics is the organ transplant company. That's the only one I can think of. That's absolutely unheard of. A rule of, of 95. Uh, so the company not only is, is profitable at 16% EBITDA margin, but it is growing at 79% already from a large base, um, and and they're growing even faster now that they have the Pepsi partnership. So if you adjust that price, you know, even if we were to look at say a an EV oversells, it looks expensive at a 12. When you put that into perspective with a 79% growth that you get, you realize that it's actually really cheap growth adjusted at a 0.39. Well, not really cheap, but um, for the, for that space, it is it is cheap. For that space, is, it is cheap. And, and the, these are special companies, companies that are able to grow this fast are, are special companies. I own Celsius. Celsius is the only stock out of all of the six stocks in this spreadsheet that I, that I own. I'm happy to own it. Uh, I hope to have it as a core position at some point. And um, given the stock is going back up right now for Celsius, uh, it, it may happen without me having to buy too much of it because it may earn that spot in the portfolio. Moving on to Shake Shack. Shake Shack is a CNBC favorite. Uh, you know, I try to not listen to CNBC anymore, but back when I used to listen to CNBC, that was all they would talk about on CNBC. Shake Shack and the burgers are the best, etc., etc. Well, when I look at the numbers, it doesn't show in the numbers. I mean, it's a burger joint growing at 17% the next 12 months. Okay, that's right, right. Twice the rate of the economy. It's not, it's not, not that, not that great. Uh, gross margin, 37%. Stock is expensive, more expensive than the average uh, valuation in, in, in my spreadsheet, uh, um, a tad more, you know, kind of inline slightly expensive-ish. Uh, EBITDA margin is 9%. So if you add EBITDA margin to revenue growth, you get a 26. You don't even break a rule of 40 either. Here's another stock, another Wall Street favorite, which is DoorDash, which as far as valuation, uh, a little expensive, kind of in line with what I see. Uh, the growth is okay at 20, 21%. The gross margin is very low for DoorDash for a business that doesn't have physical operations. This is an app. The gross margin, I would want to see a gross margin of 80%. I don't understand why the gross margin is so low uh, for a stock like, like DoorDash. So DoorDash obviously has a lot of competition with other apps like Uber Eats, for example. Um, nonetheless, you know, they, and they lose money. The EBITDA margin loses money. So the valuation is kind of inline-ish, you know, not too cheap, not too expensive. Um, but the gross margin is disappointing for the type of business. That's a platform business. And the EBITDA margin is negative, so you get a, you get a rule of 20. So, so not in anywhere close, a rule of 40. And lastly, I'll talk about the Cheesecake Factory. The reason why I talk about the Cheesecake Factory is because I see it a lot on YouTube. Um, that in Texas Roadhouse, believe it or not, these two come off often from from mainstream YouTubers, uh, and uh, and I I I I don't I don't see anything I would like. I mean, imagine how huge these Cheesecake Factory stores are. They're they're beautiful stores. They cost a fortune. How much does it cost to build a Cheesecake Factory? Is it seven? Eight million bucks, a large building like this, probably, probably something like that. Probably seven to eight million dollars what it costs to build a building like this. And of course, you're gonna, you're not gonna be able to grow very fast when when you are constrained by the size of the building. So eight percent, you're not growing very fast. The gross margin is okay at forty percent for that sector. It's okay, but even if I adjust it for that, well, we. We, we get we get a valuation that is very cheap in my spreadsheet, but that's only because the stock is trading at one time sales. That's the main reason. EBITDA margin is not very good for a business that is very mature at 7%, and you get, get a rule of 15. And this is where I will conclude, right? Cake, cake. I didn't put this in there as a hypergrowth. I don't consider cake a hypergrowth, but I wanted to conclude with, with this. I think if one is, is going to invest in the restaurant space, it's it's important to invest in, in something that has a small footprint that can grow really, really fast. And that's why Brothers, in my view, is perhaps the second most compelling business in there. This is what the Dutch Brothers look like. There's actually one getting built right next to my area. It's very tiny. I'm, 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 I'm impressed by how tiny this uh, this store is. And you can see it, it, it wouldn't cost that much money to build something 
something so tiny. It's just a drive through just just a few chairs outside. You don't have to worry about uh, about having having a dining room that you have to clean, that you have to maintain, dealing with public bathrooms. You don't have to deal with any of that. Uh, and that's why I believe they may be able to grow much faster than say a Cava, which which are which have dining rooms, which have which are bigger stores, or Shake Shack, which is similar, which are which have you know a fairly slightly slightly bigger footprint of course granted Kava and Shaq even have a, a much lower they have a much lower food and trade than cheesecake cheesecake is way too big of a footprint way too big I these businesses often uh, like cheesecake factory I may consider cheese, cheesecake factory and, and I've gotten people yell at me in the comment section uh, calling some businesses a charity but to me when I look at cheesecake factory I'm like uh, yeah it's kind of a charity I'm sorry it's kind of like it's, it's great it's great for for the consumer it's great if you're a customer there but if you're an investor why do I say it's a charity look at this chart this is let me bring to front. This is this is 2004. So I didn't share pick. I went. I went. I roughly tried to do to do a 20 year period over a 20 year period. So from here to here, you did a 16 percent on your money in 20 years. Now think about that. Think about that compared to inflation. I mean, that, that's equivalent to losing 60, 70 percent of your money if you adjust for the inflation denominator. If you adjust for the denominator, you would have been better off just buying the market or buying a house your house would have performed better so that's why i say some of his businesses i mean look like, look like charities even though the growth is, is is okay and the numbers look okay i would hate to own a stock for 20 years and it barely barely moves and compare this to two stocks that have very tiny operations a very tiny footprint in that same sector so chipotle mexican grill you know it's kind of well it's kind of an indoor drive through but chipotle if you remember chipotle these these long lines all over and these stores are very small footprint kind of like a cava even a smaller footprint than a cava actually at least the cava i went to had a bigger bigger footprint than a chipotle chipotles are tiny um that allows you to grow faster and same for celsius 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 you know it, it's all it's all built in the back end these drinks are bottled in the back end there's no celsius store there's no physical store you just you distribute it on the store and so when you uh when you when you take out some of that infrastructure you're able to grow much faster and this i'll show you the, the return in the beverage space of say a chipotle so you're at a 25 percent over uh, almost a you know a 17 18 year period you're at a 25 percent celsius you're at a 30 percent around let's round it up to 31 so 25 percent versus 31 um, percent to me that difference in the return is all about how much how much of a physical space are you using because because operating in the physical world slows you down think about all of the rules all of the all of the code all of the things that you have to follow in the very regular world like 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 you know if you're building a new location yeah, you have to you have to go through the local government. You have to get it approved. You have to you have to get it inspected. You have to go through local health authorities. Food health authorities, they move at the speed of government, and moving at the speed of government means that you're not going to grow as fast. You're just not going to grow as fast as 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 a as a business that operates in a more remote type of way so anyways i'm very happy with my investment in celsius um i think brothers outside of celsius i think brothers bro dutch brothers is is the more interesting stock out of all of those given the small print print given that they even though their drinks don't look like, like coffee very much to me they still sell you know sugar and caffeine sugar and caffeine kind of has you coming back coming back coming back and so that's that's a that's a that's a good business to be in historically um interesting companies i look forward to following them a, a, a little more but right now my money is on celsius and this is obviously no investment advice this is just entertainment i hope you were entertained by this no financial advice video please like please subscribe please follow me on x if you can thank you for watching and have a wonderful day